Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone had a great new year and welcome to 2021 and I am back in the action for some new videos for you all and I hope you all will subscribe to the channel and also like the videos to keep me supported as well and to show your and to show me your support and that would help a lot. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel and also like the videos as I post them and that would show me a lot of support. If y'all could do that, it'd be a big help. And I have a good video planned for us today. So I hope y'all will stay tuned and uh, like the video at the end if you would. And also maybe subscribe. And we'll be back to the video right after this. And we are back here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you about the Razer Synapse 3 program that you can use on your Razer RGB products. And to get this started, we're just going to go down to Chrome here, or any web browser as you use. And you're going to want to type in Razer.com. And you're gonna be you're gonna come up with the Razer website here, and this just has all kinds of um, updates on Razer products and everything. And what you're gonna want to do to get to the download is you go to Apps and Downloads right here, and then go to Synapse Three right here. And this is the Razer Synapse Three program and is going to unify hardware configuration tool that is going to take your Razer devices to the next level. It gives access to advanced options and granular control as you re rebind buttons, assign macros, personalize device lighting, and more. So the program is going to look just like this right here, where you can individually customize every RGB any on any of your devices that you have that have RGB lighting on them and that are from Razer. So this is just some demonstrations here, some things that you can do with the actual like macro and click button settings on the mouses and you can also do these on any of the other products as well. And this is what it's going to look like right here. If you have a lot of their products, it's going to be all lined up here like that. And you can also use this program with Alexa as well. And you can also use Chroma Connect and the Chroma Visualizer. And you can also use Philips Hue. If you have a Philips Hue um, bridge that has Bluetooth. And you can also connect this with Wi-Fi as well. And you can use that to turn your Philips Hue bulbs on and off and also change the colors to whatever your Razer product is using. Or you can change it to individual colors. And any uh, uh, Nano Leaf, you can use that if you have a Nano Leaf product. And these are your, mic your macro lists right here for your keyboards. And Razer HyperShift functionality is also supported there. And you can change to your core services. And um, you can also install the Razer Synapse Pro. And this right here is going to be a uh, little uh, visualization of your layout. Um, so if you have the keyboard and the mouse pad and the mouse, then you can visual you can visualize this with the with this custom layout right here. So to get started on the download, you just going to want to go all the way back up and click on Download Now right here. And then you can put this in your uh, downloads folder or your documents folder or wherever you want to put it. And let's click save. And then you can um, run the installation file and install it. It's very simple. I'll just go through step by step. I already have it installed on my computer, so I won't go through the, the actual installation of it because it's it's really it's actually pretty simple. It's really step by step. It's like three buttons you gotta click and that's installed. It's pretty simple. So I'll minimize this right here. And then once you have it installed, you will either have a desktop icon over here where all your other icons are. And you will also have your um, icon right down here like I have. And all you have to do is just right click on that on Razer Central and um, open up Razer Synapse right here. 
and this you can also change your settings exit all of the apps exit synapse log out and check change your settings and check for updates as well razor synapse is right here so i'm going to go ahead and click on that and i'll make this a little bit bigger so that you can see everything so i have a razor ballistic mouse i have the razor sinosa chroma keyboard and i also have the razor goliath extended chroma mouse pad so these are the three devices of razor that i have and um, they work really well. I do highly recommend them. Um, but if I want to change the settings of them, all I have to do is just click on any of them. I'll click on the mouse for instance here, and here I can change the actual button functionality of the mouse. You cannot change the left click button because that is a primary function of the mouse, but you can change the right click function. You can change the scroll click, um, I have the uh, little pedal button on the side that's right here. It's magnetic. It's a little pedal button. I have that set to I have that set to my Windows button, so I can open up my Windows button pretty easy. All you have to do is press that button, and it will open and close my um, Windows taskbar there, or Start menu. Excuse me. Um, and I also have mouse button five and four and volume down and volume up right there these button button five and four is set to um in chrome or a web browser any web browser it will go forward and back a page so it's pretty it's easier to uh, browse the web and access things quickly so if i want to go back a page then i just click on mouse button four mouse button five will go forward to that previous page and uh, the middle buttons here on the mouse is volume up and volume down. And then these are scroll up and scroll down as normal. And then you can also go into hyper shift mode as well, which will, you can change up all these different settings again. And it can be a whole different set of settings. That's basically what hyper shift is, is you can set up two different like um, sets of settings. I don't really use hyper shift. Um, it's just I don't really need it for anything. And up here in this little icon, you can set onboard profiles, and also you can set um, memory profiles as well. So you can set your computer to store them or the mouse to store them if you uh, move the mouse to different computers. And you want this to sit all these settings to to stay the same. Then I would recommend to put them on, on the onboard memory profile so that way whatever computer you plug this into it will save that setting um, and that makes it a little bit easier if you're using multiple computers with one mouse and we'll click off that and if we go to performance here we can set the um, DPI settings our dots per inch is what DPI stands for and it's basically the speed of the pixels that's moving across so if I change this to stage 3, my mouse is going to move a lot quicker. Stage 4 is even quicker, like I'm barely moving my mouse. And um, stage 5 is very quick. I'm hardly moving the mouse at all, and it's just zipping across the screen. This is very good for like gaming and stuff if you want like really quick movement or whatever. I don't really need that, so I keep mine like usually down at like, stage 2. Pretty good speed. Like that's that's a decent speed for me, and right here you can just change the number of profiles or stages that is there. So if you just want two, then just click two. I just keep it open to five because it doesn't really bother me. And you can also um, do it manually, so you can set it right here. You can type it in, or you can drag this slider bar and make your mouse go quicker or slower. I think mine was on twenty five hundred, so I'll keep that there. And then you can change these as well if you want preset um, stages then you can preset them there and you can then enable x and y's as well so you can have different speeds for um, uh, different coordinates of the screen so you can for x x axis you can have one speed and y axis will be a different speed Right here is the frequency of data updates for the mouse. This is a 1000 frequency uh, mouse, so I have it set on 1000 because it's going to be the snappiest 
that it can be. You, you can also set it on 125 and you can also set it on 1000 or 500. That's just what the uh, preset options are here. And if we move on to lighting, we can change the lighting of the mouse as well. So you can turn the brightness on or off, or you can change this slider here and dim it down or brighten it up. And you can also have it switch off the lighting if this display is off. I use this feature a lot because um, I have mine set to like 30 minutes. It'll turn the screen off to save some power and also save some performance on the computer. It makes it a little easier for it. So it goes into sleep after, I mean, it goes to sleep after an hour and it turns the display off after 30 minutes and it just saves a little bit of energy and it also is a little easier on the computer. So when the display is turned off, it will also turn off all of the, um, the RGB on my keyboard, mouse pad, and my mouse. It'll turn them all off so that way while I'm sleeping, I'm not distracted or kept up by the lighting because it can get pretty bright in a dark room um you can also have it set to an idle time as well so if it's idle for a certain amount of minutes then it'll turn off um over here is your quick effects so you can have all these quick effects right here and over here is the advanced effects as well the advanced effects will change uh, across all of your devices or one of them specifically so you can do both advanced effects are applied across multiple razor chroma enabled devices globally and are not saved to device profile so these are controlled by the computer solely so um these will go across all of your devices that you have the chroma enabled on quick effects are presets saved onto the device's profile so the device itself will have a this profile saved onto it so you can change all these here you can have it set an audio meter with a color boost color boost is just going to be how um how high the peaks are on the keyboard specifically it looks the best um because you can have an actual like audio meter set up on the keyboard so you can color boost that to have more defined peaks in that equalizer. And you can also have it breathe. You can set it to specific colors. So it will breathe these colors or you can set it to a random color. And it will randomize the color breathing. And it really does look like it's actually breathing. Um, you can have it re set to a reactive. So when you click the mouse button, it will um flash that color every every time you click the button the mouse button it will flash that color the same thing for the keyboard if you click the keyboard it will like um flash the whatever light is selected spectrum cycling is just going to cycle through the color spectrum and static colors i have mine set to this deep purple color because it's it's just nice on the eyes when you're looking at the screen it's not too bright, it's not too uh it's not too dark either. It's just that I don't know, I kinda like that dark purple color. Not to be like weird or anything, but I just like it. Um and the calibration right here, you can calibrate your mouse to whatever um razor um mouse pad you have, or if you just don't have a razor mouse pad and you just have some random mouse pad then you can just select the no calibration but mine is specific for the razor goliath chroma and that works good and then you can also add surfaces here razor goliath control and all these other razor um mouse pads the um razor goliath and the Goliath Extended are the same mouse pad, just one is bigger than the other, so they're the same um, calibration. So it doesn't need a recalibration for the Goliath um, Extended keyboard. And then there's the lift off range. So I have mine set to one because I like I have a habit of lifting my mouse off of the mouse pad. So I set mine way down because when I lift off, I just am moving the mouse itself and not I'm not trying to move the cursor on the screen but you can also set this like 
to and on the scale of one to ten so this is the lift off so if it's set to 10 then you can actually have the mouse off of the mouse pad and the mouse will still move and if you have this set to one then just the slightest move, movement off of the mouse pad it'll, it'll stop the cursor from moving and um we can go back to synapse here so that's pretty much all there is about a mouse all the mouses are about the same just a little bit different settings and the sinosochroma um uh, the settings are right here so you just have customize and lighting gaming mode there is a gaming mode for the for the sinosa um i have mine set to off because i'm not gaming right now um when i go into game i do enable it and that will disable um the windows key and you can also have it disable alt tab and alt f4 alt f4 is the all renowned known um, kill command for a windows program so if i open up file explorer here and i hit alt f4 it will kill the it will close the window out and i'll do it again here if i hit alt f4 it would close the program so if, if you have the end of game it will close your game out and depending on the game settings it might ask you to save it first and it might not so um having that enabled is probably a good thing when it when you're in game and alt tab it will just tab between different programs so if you're like going really fast on the keyboard or whatever playing a game and you all accidentally hit alt tab it will bring up this and then you will die if you're in a combat game or something because you'll be locked out of your controls so um and you can have it set to always on and it will have a little light on the this light right here is illuminated on my keyboard that is the game mode um, light so when game mode, game mode is on that light is on and you can also set this right here there's a button this button right here is the game mode button so you can hit um, the fn button and then and that button there and that will um, turn game mode on and off this button right here is recording keys and this button right here is the gaming mode on off button which is pretty cool so next I'll just turn game mode off there and then we can go to lighting the lighting is basically the same, all the same stuff here. You just have a few more. Um, I have a few of them that I have installed, like fire. And fire looks like a fire on your keyboard. It's actually pretty cool. And wave is going to be a wave of light across the, across the keyboard. Wheel is going to be a wheel. It's all self-explanatory. Starlight is actually a pretty cool one. It will like blink different color lights on each key. And ripple is like a, it's just, it's a ripple across this like you're stepping in a puddle. It's like once you hit a key, it'll ripple from that key. If you hit a different key, it'll ripple. It'll ripple from that other key. It's pretty cool. Ambient awareness is gonna be it's gonna link your whatever screen or window you're in. It's gonna like blend the colors into that. It's a little it's a little weird, but if you're using a game or something, it'll like blend the game colors into the keyboard. And then you have your advanced effects here. I have these installed. But I, again, I like the static one for some reason. But um, we can move on to the mouse mat here. And then you don't have any settings for calibration or anything. But you have just the colors. And all the colors are the same as the other ones. So if we go back to Synapse here, you're going to have Chroma Connect which this is going to connect to your apps games and profiles with chroma visualizer and you can change those settings and stuff and you can also disable it so this is going to sync your chroma enabled devices and smart lights with the media you're playing for a fun and immersive lighting experience so um if you're playing a game and that game supports chroma visualizer then the game can override your 
lighting on your keyboard and matched it to the controls of the game. And I know a lot of the simulation games have that and it's pretty cool. It will like map out your controls that you need for the game and it will be all different colors and and it's actually pretty cool. We go back to Synapse here and we'll go to Chroma Studio. This is actually the um, layout. I don't know why the keyboard's up there. It should be like right here. But um, I mean, you could probably move that just like that. That is definitely much better. And this is the actual setup of my, of what I have going on right now. And then you can change your individual keys here. If you click this select button, you can select different keys to different colors, and then you can make your own like um, color visualizer here. And then you have all the settings all down here that you can do for you can set up, and you can also like select multiple keys at one time. So you can select the numpad and have that a different color if you wanted to. You can also select these as different colors as well, individually or together. And you can also select the um, Chrome, the um, mouse pad as well, and that is all one LED. And it's just like it's strung around the the mouse pad using a light emitter in this control module right here, and that is emitting light through the the um, and the uh, plastic tube around the outside of that. That is the Chroma Studio. It's that's actually pretty cool. I've made a few of them myself, um, and it's it's actually pretty cool. So you can make your own visualization there. If we go back, and I'm not gonna save that. And we that's the Chroma Studio Chroma Visualizers right here, and this is where you can change your Chroma Visualizer settings. Always off, always on. Enable for selected apps. And then you can select your playback devices here. And you can also add applications right here. So you're going to go to the actual program, like exe file. And um, that will be your file that you need. You can change your visualization right here. You can select a color option, the background option here. And the properties of it. So you can scale it and decay it. And you can also preview it. The preview will be right here. So that is Chroma Visualizer. And then you can go down here to Philips Hue. And if I, I don't have a, I have the Philips Hue bulbs, but I don't have the Hue bridge because I have my Alexa, so I don't need the bridge. So um, if you did have the bridge, then you can control it through this app here. And this is the Chroma integration so um you if you have the the Philips Hue bulbs that change colors then you can sync this with your keyboard and mouse if you wanted to these are the macros right here so you can select all your macro keys those are pretty self explanatory i mean you just set your macro keys and macro keys are key bindings that were different from Windows. So if you don't want Windows to have a key set to a certain function, then you can change that, and that's called a macro. And you can also record here, so you can record your macros um, if you wanted to. If we'll go back to Synapse here, and then if you have a Nano Leaf, then you can also sync them here with the Nanoleaf Chroma integration. So then those will be the same color as your mouse and keyboard. Or you can set them to whatever color that you wanted to. Feedback there, um, you can also register your products and then you can view your compatible devices here. And this will take you to their website. And these are all the different Chroma enabled devices that are available. And they're, of course, all Razer. So we'll minimize that there. And then you have the Razer Store, Razer Support, and then the Gold and Silver. That's like a rewards thing that they got going. 
and global shortcuts are right here so you can add shortcuts to the any of the buttons on the keyboard or the mouse as right here so i can set this to the sinosa or the ballistic and then you can change all this different stuff for the windows functions functions um, multimedia launch you can launch programs from a, well, just one button on the keyboard or mouse and text function functions there you can also switch you can switch the lighting if you wanted to just by a single button on the keyboard that you don't use for windows um, and that's actually pretty cool I like that that option a lot go back to the dashboard there and that is pretty much it for the Razer Synapse 3 program and I will also show you the Razer Central as well. So we'll go back here and then go to Razer Central. And this is where you're going to have like all your account information and everything and notifications will show up there. And your apps will show up here. Razer Cortex and Razer Synapse. And if you have a, an update available, then the update will show here as install. And then you can install that, that, um, that update or you can install Razer Cortex here if you wanted to. And that's pretty much it for Razer Central. That's just linking your different Razer programs into one thing so you can update them. And your account information is right here. And this is also pretty much it for the Razer Synapse 3 program. And I hope everyone found this useful. And I will be linking everything into, this, into the description below um, for you all to download. And um, like I said, I have the Razer Ballistic, Razer Sinosa Chroma, and the Razer Goliath Extended Chroma uh, mousepad so that you all know what I'm using. And I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you back um, the next time. And that will probably be on Friday. So I'll see you all, and I hope you all liked the video, and please subscribe if you would, and please like the video, and that would help me out a lot. And I hope you all have a great day. Peace out.